So we're going to look at some well-known and established power series, and we're not going to get into how we got these, but these are well-known and, and established series. So we can use these as kind of facts. These can be like on formula sheets. These are ones that we can use for references because these are fairly well established. So we've looked at a bunch of these already, actually. This 1 over 1 minus x, this function is essentially the, the sum of an infinite geometric series, right? This is the formula for s infinity, right? Remember, if you recall, our s infinity is equal to the starting point 1 minus or 1 over 1 minus r. So that x represents our common ratio. And again, it will converge as long as our x value is less than 1. So this is just basic uh, power series are our basic power series and it does represent our infinite geometric series we also have a series for e to the x and it looks like this okay we're going to have factorials in the bottom and the generalization is just x is just our regular power series divided by n factorial and because we're dividing by n factorial you might notice that when the, that denominator is very big it will be easy to show that the radius is convergence for this because the radius of convergence is, ends up being infinite. Okay, and we'll look at some of these later. Our log x function is basically, it's just actually a variation of our of our 1 minus x to be honest, but we'll, we'll have to see how we get that. Okay, but this is our, our log x function. It's going to be 1 minus what, x minus 1, so the center is going to be at 1. And it's just our power series, and we're going to have a, an alternating harmonic series that generates the log function. And interestingly enough, the alternating harmonic series gives us log two as our as our infinite sum. Okay, that now that's I don't know how that's related, but that's curious that those two things uh, show up the way they do. Our sine function looks like this again has factorial in the denominator, so this is good for because with these factorials, we can almost guarantee that these ones, will, the when we do our ratio tests, our radius is going to be infinite. Cosine looks like this. Okay, it's fairly similar, but it's just kind of offset a little bit. And our arctan is going to be, uh, looks a little bit like our sine function, but notice that there's not a factorial in the denominator here. Okay, Now, we don't need to memorize these. We can always refer to these, but we will use these as references as we move along. So, what's happening in these power series? Okay, these power series, if I look at y equals e to the x, so I'll just draw that in red here. Okay, there's my y equals e to the x function here. Okay, so it looks like that. And if I increase the number of terms of my polynomial or my series expansion, okay, so if I take a look at my series expansion here, it's just going to be 1 plus x plus 1 half x squared plus 1 6 x cubed, etc. And as I increase my the number of terms of my polynomial, look what happens. I have, first of all, I have my parabola. My parabola is going to kind of approach it like that. And it's actually not a bad fit between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so it's actually a pretty good fit for a lot of this graph. So if I take a look at, if I add one more term to this, so again, I'll draw my function in red here. So there's my e to the x function. And if I take a look at the, the cubic function, so if I add th the third term to this, okay, this is my cubic polynomial. And wow, it's already matching really, really well. We only have basically three terms so far. And this part of the function is virtually matching precisely. Okay? And as and the nice thing about these power series is we can add one more term to this, or one more, or one more, and we can get a better and better approximation to this e to the x function using this polynomial expansion. So same thing's happening for sine. Okay, I have my regular sine x function. Okay, there's my sine x function. It's going to be the sine curve here. Okay, and if we take a look at our the first two terms of that series expansion, so we use the linear term and the cubic term, already you can see that 
I didn't draw this very well, but you can see that already near zero, near the center, it's already a very good match. Okay, and it just kind of starts diverging, but if I add another term to it, so here's my sine x here in red. Okay, there's my sine x function. And as I add another term to this, okay, so I've added now, there's one, two, three terms I've added to this polynomial expansion. So it's now degree five. Notice that it, oh, it's even that after the first bump, it's actually following that curve very, very closely. Okay, and if we want it more accurate, we can just add one more term or one more or one more. And we can increase our accuracy by doing that. Now, log x, this has a limited uh, domain. Okay, when we actually do a, our interval test, our interval ends up being only from uh, 0 to 2. But even this one, and this is probably the worst example of, of the three, but there's my log function. Okay, and there's my cubic function. Here's my cubic function here. Okay, and you can see that that cubic function at, z at the center, it's a perfect match because it just touches at the center there. At the, the center always matches in these polynomial expansions, but near the center, it's not too bad. It does start to diverge, okay? And that's the nature of this particular one is that the log x function the interval of convergence of this power series is actually quite small. But even still, we can see that as I increase the number of terms, okay, it does start matching the graph a little bit better near the center, and it's just going to match better and better and better. This one does it very slowly compared to these ones here. Okay, sine x and you know e to the x, the graphs start matching the the polynomial graphs or the series expansion start matching the graphs very quickly.